powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. Janelle is off this evening. We begin tonight with breaking news west of Billings where fire crews are scrambling to fight a windblown wildfire that's burning near Molt. Crews are assembling at this time near the Buffalo Trail Road. We now join Q2's David Jay who's on the scene of this fire. David, what can you tell us what's the latest? Well, Jay, uh, we're right here on uh, Lip Road out between 88th Street West and uh, Buffalo Trail. This fire kind of started off uh, right behind us, actually, and it's uh, been spreading westwardly out uh, toward uh, Buffalo Trail. It's uh, reported as uh, just north of the uh, Chief Joseph Monument there at the intersection of Lip and Buffalo Trail. We did talk with uh, Lieutenant O'Donnell about uh, some of this, and he says that this time there are no uh, structures uh, threatened. But at the time that we got here, about 9 o'clock, we saw the fire, at least from the angle we have, double in length from uh, this edge here all the way at uh, toward that area out near Buffalo Trail. So uh, at this time, uh, no uh, structures threatened, as, as uh, Lieutenant O'Donnell says. A lot of the firefighters were kind of down here in this valley looking to protect things, and then at right around 9.30, they took off and went up Buffalo Trail to try to do some more things. But at this time, that's uh, about all the information we're able to get uh, from the sheriff, uh, the DES coordinator, uh, Lieutenant O'Donnell. But fire seems to still be going strong right now and moving from the uh, east to the west. Uh, that's the latest from out here. Jay, back to you. All right, David Jay from the scene of this wildfire burning west of Billings. We can tell you that DES coordinator in Yellowstone County, Lieutenant Ken O'Donnell, says the fire is spreading. Molt volunteer crews were the first on the scene, and they immediately called countywide mutual aid. That area is very rugged. Crews are struggling just to gain access to the fire. No word on its size yet or what may have caused it, but as David just reported, no structures appear to be threatened at this time. Early this morning, west of Billings, before dawn, dry lightning apparently to blame for a wildfire that scorched several hundred acres. This fire near the intersection of Shorey Road and Highway 3. Q2's Connor Pregitzer joins us now with more on this morning's firefight. Well, thank you, Jay. At just after 4 a.m. this morning, firefighters responded to calls of a fire south of Shorey Road, just off of Highway 3. Now, County DES says that all indications point to a dry lightning strike as the cause of the blaze. By 9 a.m., the fire was largely contained after burning through 325 acres in relatively short order. Multiple fire response agencies heeded the call put out by initial responders, Fuego Volunteer Fire Company, and all in, roughly 40 firefighters worked to control the flames. Interim DES coordinator for Yellowstone County, Lieutenant Kent O'Donnell, was hesitant to call the fire fully suppressed, with afternoon conditions conducive to fire development still present, but he believes the blaze to be of no further danger in its current state. Now, according to Lieutenant O'Donnell, the landowner himself played a huge role in the rapid containment of the fire. One of the local landowners, uh, Steve Selmer, uh, quick thinking, jumped in a, uh, a large tractor uh, with a disc and was able to start a fire line to the south of the fire, uh, which was a big, huge, huge uh, bonus to to knock that down and have a little bit of a barrier while fire is trying to get set up and start suppression. Now, Lieutenant O'Donnell tells us that the fire season is definitely here and that he expects fire restrictions to be issued in the coming days. Jay? All right, thank you, Connor. Also, east of Billings, a developing story tonight where Interstate 94 made for an impromptu runway for a small plane. Check out this video. The small Cessna aircraft was apparently running low on fuel when it opted to land on the highway. Now, the pilot was able to land safely. This about three miles east of Billings between Lockwood and Huntley. There were no injuries reported. Traffic was not delayed. The Montana Attorney General plans to ask the U.S. Supreme Court to intervene in a Billings rape case, a case that dates back 31 years. This case involves the rape of an eight-year-old girl back in 1987. Jimmy Ray Bromgard of Billings convicted of that crime and spent 15 years in prison that's before DNA evidence proved his innocence. Once Bromgard was released, he then sued the state, eventually winning a $3.5 million settlement. In 2014, a new suspect emerges when the same DNA evidence that exonerated Bromgard implicated this man, 57-year-old Ronald Tipton of White Sulphur Springs. Tipton then charged with three counts of rape, but just last month those charges were dismissed when the Montana Supreme Court ruled the statute of limitations had expired. 
Now, Attorney General Tim Fox says he wants the U.S. Supreme Court to review the case. DOJ spokesman John Barnes telling us that the Attorney General now has until October 3rd to file a petition asking the High Court to accept the case. If the court agrees, Barnes says then oral arguments will be scheduled. In Montana's U.S. Senate campaign, TV is the big money when it comes to advertising and reaching voters. But as MTN's Mike Dennison reports now, candidates and political groups are using digital ads more and more. And with Facebook, you can track not only who's doing what, but also who's being targeted. Since early May, more than 1,200 ads on Facebook have mentioned Democratic U.S. Senator John Tester. Most are from his own campaign, like this one. Well, I think the difference between um, you know, rural America and, and urban America can be summed up very simply. Um, if a person living in the middle of Washington, D.C., uh, runs out of milk, they probably walk two, three, four blocks and find, another gro find a grocery store. If you run out of milk out here, it's a 26-mile round trip. This minute-long ad that ran four days last week targeted only Montana women. It cost less than $100 and reached between 5,000 and 10,000 people. All that information is available on a tracking website that Facebook began recently in an effort to be more transparent about its political ads. You can go to the site, search for ads by subject, and get these data. Here's an ad targeting Tester over his actions that helped sink President Trump's VA secretary nominee in May. Montanans are decent. Montanans are fair. John Tester claims to have those values. But his smearing of a good man, Navy Admiral Ronnie Jackson, shows how dishonest that claim is. This ad in July came from Restoration Pack, which is funded by an Illinois billionaire. It targeted mostly women in Montana and some men. Tester's Republican challenger, Matt Rosendale, is using Facebook to promote himself, including one ad that highlights his support of President Trump. Tester uses the platform not only to promote himself, but also to raise money, with an ad of him making this personal appeal, targeting specific Facebook users in every state. These ads are relatively low cost, and TV is still the big dog when it comes to political advertising. But as one consultant told me, in a race decided by a few thousand votes, these Facebook ads could help make the difference between winning and losing. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Thank you, Mike. Tomorrow night, Mike will bring us a closer look at all the spending in Montana's U.S. Senate race by the outside groups, such as special interest PACs. Trump administration security officials came out swinging today against foreign interference in U.S. elections as they try to reassure Americans that there is a government-wide effort to protect the election's integrity leading up to the midterms. Intelligence officials maintain the U.S. is under attack from Russia, words that have not come from the commander-in-chief. CBS's Angelica Alvarez tonight has more from the White House. President Trump took the stage in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania for another Make America Great Again rally. He pushed back against criticism of his performance at the Helsinki summit. They wanted me to go up and have a boxing match. I said, whatever happened to diplomacy? Earlier, the president's national security team got tough on Russian meddling, vowing to protect election integrity. We acknowledge the threat. It is real. It is continuing. And we're doing everything we can to have a legitimate election that the American people can have trust in. FBI Director Christopher Wray said the cyber attacks are ongoing. Our adversaries are trying to undermine our country on a persistent and regular basis, whether it's election season or not. National security officials did not provide any details on any new attacks or new policies to combat them. But for some lawmakers, the declaration was at least a start. Look, it'd be great if the president said it, but what's even better is that the administration is doing something about it. Others expressed doubt, like Democratic Senator Mark Warner, who tweeted, if only it was actually backed up by anything the president has said or done on Russia. Angelica Alvarez, CBS News, the White House. Switching gears to the weather scene, Bob McGuire joining us now. Bob, a rather bizarre weather event that we had in Billings this morning, something called a heat burst. 
Yeah, you've never heard of this before. Well, you've heard of a microburst, yep. right? Now, this is kind of like the same thing, only instead of a lot of wind blowing things around, it caused the temperatures to heat up. Here's the way it looked. At uh, 4 o'clock this morning, it was 75 degrees, and then by 4.52, it had jumped up to 92 degrees. Now, normally, when we think of wind creating some heat, we think of the Santa Ana winds moving into California, or maybe even the Chinook winds up in Montana. That was not the case this time. It was a thunderstorm. Remember the thunderstorm we had this morning? Well, that had a lot of wind in it. The storm was starting to die down. There was no more rain left, so the rain couldn't evaporate and cause cooling. So when the when the wind came down of the, the storm, it hit the ground, compressed the air that was here, and it cooked us up to about 92 degrees. Jay? 92 degrees at 5 a.m. All right. Thank you, Bob. Well, uh, now viral video is catching the attention of Yellowstone National Park Rangers. This is the video we showed you last night, a man taunting, agitating a bison in the Hayden Valley on Tuesday of this week. And it's all caught on camera until the camera person freaks out. This man was uninjured in the incident. Rangers, though, say they are still investigating this incident, and it's an active case. In a Facebook post, park officials reminding visitors to keep their distance from all park animals and to report any reckless behavior to park officials. Montana's East Rosebud Creek, now part of the wild and scenic river system. It's the first waterway in our state to get that title since 1976. The bill first introduced in the House by Montana Congressman Greg Gianforte passed in July of last year. Both Montana senators sponsored and passed similar legislation this past July. And today, President Trump signed the bill into law. This newly enacted law covers 20 miles of East Rosebud Creek. Up next on tonight's 10 o'clock news, it's a huge effort for some of Montana's tiniest residents. Coming up, we'll take a look at how Billings Clinic is helping families through the healing. And in sports tonight, Deb Greeno is Montana's only cowboy inducted to this year's Pro Rodeo Hall of Fame. Scott Breen takes us down memory lane coming up. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 10 o'clock news on Q2, Montana's news leader.